babes welcome back to my channel today is december 23rd and we have two more days left of bellamis so hang in there with me we're almost there today we're going to take a look back at some of the palettes eyeshadow palettes that i have purchased this year all of these palettes have been purchased and used in 2023 admittedly however two things one two of these palettes i did not buy right away as soon as it released as a matter of fact i hesitated a lot before i actually pulled the trigger on them not just because they were a low buy but because they were not they didn't interest me right off the bat they didn't capture my heart right off the bat but i have to say here on on my channel i ate my words because these palettes are beautiful the second thing that i will mention in here is that um for one of the two entries it's by the same person so so you're gonna have a smattering of bold colors more um contemporary work appropriate school appropriate colors I think I've run the gap and, and bold and beautiful colors. So I think with this selection, it takes you from day to night easily. And also I want to say all of these palettes are high end luxury palettes. So I didn't really pick anything that was mid tier or lower price, not because they weren't beautiful, it's just because I didn't reach for them as much as I reached for these. Now, when it comes to me being on the low buy, no buy, when I started pulling out all the things that I bought in 2023, I feel like I was buying more than I was not buying. But I digress. <laughs> Here are the nominees for eye palettes that pop in 2023. The first palette, babes, should be no surprise to you. It is a Pat McGrath palette. But, however, the entry may be a surprise to you. This is her newest mothership, mothership number 11, Sunlit Seduction. So you may ask, why, Bella, do you say it was a surprise? You always buy Pat McGrath, right? wrong in this case i hesitated so much to purchase this because i felt like i already have a similar palette in mothership seven and mothership eight um they both remind me of this palette right here with the exception of you know this pop of color right here which is very crimson like and maybe this one over here which is more lavender leaning I thought that this was just nothing special and I could wait. So when it released, I didn't purchase it right away. I didn't gravitate, gravitate to it. Um, what I like about it though, is that the formulas and textures are consistent with what I know her for. The shade range actually does have a lot of depth to it. Didn't see it until I grabbed it for myself and then I strawed it really working myself through the palette this creamy goodness right here is such a great transition shade for this palette you can take it from this to this from this to this there's so many versatile ways that you can use this palette which is the other thing that i like about it all the shadows are pigmented they have great depth they're buildable so all of that is consistent with mother pat and I think the color story here is approachable and well suited for all skin tones. Some of the things I didn't like though, the top shade that I mentioned before, as you can see a little bit on my palette, it has a little bit of fallout. So I would suggest if you do use this palette that you powder underneath or start your eye look first. This way you can brush away any fallout. But other than that, I really found that this was a very cohesive palette. It has very seductive finishes, velvety mattes, and really moonlit metallics that really pop your eyes. Really great for neutral looks, looks that will take you to the office, and looks that will take you to the party. But what I really loved about this palette, that and it stands out from other neutral palettes that I've tried and tested over the years, 
is that this is really glamorous in a chic way, which is another reason why they remind me of Mothership 7 and 8, because those palettes also are very chic and sophisticated. So this is right in line with those. So if you love Mothership 7 and 8, like I love Mothership 7 and 8, then you will love Moonlit Seduction Mothership 11. Sorry, Mother Pat. I didn't know. I didn't know. The other palette that gave me sophisticated vibes in a very unique way with a great color story was Natasha Denona. This Yucca palette gave me sophisticated desert vibes. It is smooth, pigmented, and blendable. The color story kind of stands out from everything else that was released during this period. I loved this palette. Now, this is a palette when I first saw it, I was like, oh yes, I have to get it. And then when I got it and I started playing around with it, I started loving it even more. I think I had used every shadow in, the, well, yep, yeah, I have. I've used every shadow in this palette, which usually is not my thing. Usually I'll do a look maybe three times and then I'll put it back in my drawer and maybe not pull it out again until maybe a couple of weeks later or a couple of months later. This palette I was rocking for a month and a half straight. I did looks using all of these shades at least twice already. So definitely, definitely is a palette that for us brown girls, this is it, this is it. I loved it. The only thing that I didn't love and you can see it also in this palette as well, is the fallout. These metallic shades here, this one, this one, this one, and this one, those gave me the most fallout. So you have to be very, very careful when you're using this palette and tap off your brush so that you don't load up your brush before you place it onto your eye. Just tap it a little bit to get some of that fallout off or else you're going to have to redo your makeup if you did this last. So usually I do my eyeshadows last, but when I'm using this palette, I do my eyes first and then I proceed with the rest of the face because I know if I'm gonna use anything metallic in here, it's going to fall out. So that's the only thing, but this is an olive tone, neutral leaning palette. It has pops of orange, pops of teal, um, and it includes a new formula. Those sparkling foils, that I mentioned, this one, this one, this one, and this one, that is a new formula for Natasha Denona. It is beautiful, and it gives you such a high shine metallic gleam to it. I was surprised. I was surprised. Um, the color story here, I think it's quite fitting with what she's giving us, and it's long wearing, it's blendable, the quality is excellent, and yeah, a very, very cohesive palette. Kudos, tens across the board. Natasha Denona, you did that with the Yucca palette. Okay, babes, the next one, yeah, it's also by Natasha Denona. This is the I Need a Nude palette. Now, I'm gonna tell you once again, I was duped because when I saw this, I was like, well, maybe I don't need a nude. Maybe I could skip this one. And I'm so happy that I didn't. I didn't run out and get it as soon as it was released. But when I did get it, I was like, okay, I can, I can actually play with this. This is something that I can have a little fun with. So even though it mostly leans taupe and neutral, has a little bit of rosy corals in here, the finishes are really what brought it home for me for this palette. The finishes on these metallics are insane. Look at that. Um, the quality, I have nothing to knock it as far as quality goes. This was an excellent palette. I think it's perfect for those holiday parties. You can have fun with pops of color without it being too overly done for the daytime. It's perfect. It's perfect. This is definitely a palette that I would reach for if I'm doing an everyday sophisticated look. Um, it falls in line with maybe my other boss babe 
kind of palettes that I love, like Tom Ford, um, like Sydney Grace's Mattes, like Nabla. Those give me that Boss Babe vibe. These are palettes that I look to if I want to really create a sophisticated, pulled together, executive realness kind of look. These are what I would go for. And this definitely, definitely is a palette that you could go to work and then have some fun afterwards with some of these metallic shades. So this here is a very, very good palette. Now for my babes who want to have some fun, I bring to you the Danessa Myricks I Am Lightwork number five. When I tell you, when she started dropping hints that this palette was coming, I was like, oh yes, bring it to me. I'm ready. This is a limited edition palette of 18 eye and face pigments in seven dynamic color shifting finishes. Listen, not only is this a beautiful curated palette, but it also is an affirmation. So on the mirror, it says, I am. And then each of these shadows has a adjective to describe how you're feeling. So if you're feeling fierce, you might want to go to the fierce. If you're feeling resilient, you might want to go here. And depending on what you match them with, Baby, it can shape shift your eyes like you would not believe. I have such a love for this palette. I'm so glad that I grabbed it. It is perfect for the holiday season. The shadows are smooth. They're ultra pigmented and they're very, very easy to blend. Now you might notice that none of these shadows are matte. That is because when you blend them out, it's like you're having two or three shadows. It's almost like you have a matte in here already because they blend out so nicely that it doesn't even look like you only put on one shadow. So you can put on two, you can layer them. Um, you can do uh, strong all over the eye and then put brave on top of it for another color that's like outer worldly. Um, loved and healed is another combination that I've done already. Um, inspiring and abundant up here. Beautiful, beautiful. Or you can do a one and done. You can go inspiring and protect it. You can go wherever you like on this palette. Nothing is wrong. There's no wrong way to use this palette at all. Um, I love the creamy emollient feel of each and every one of these. I love that you can blend them out. You can do the toppers on top of your shimmers you and mix and match to your heart's delight. But here's the thing. It doesn't have any mats and it's expensive. $125 worth of expensive. So that's a lot to pay for a shadow with no mats in it. But because I got such a great blend out of putting on one, two, sometimes three shades at a time, and how beautifully they blend out and give a cohesive look to your eyes, it's party time, honey. It's party time. And if you are a corporate person like myself, you can still use this palette along with whatever matte you like for just a little hint of shimmer during the day. So again, there's no wrong way to use this, whether you use it on their own, whether you use them in collaboration with your mattes that you already have. This is a party in a palette. It really is a party in a palette. So that is all of my nominees for eyeshadow palettes that popped in 2023. As always, I'm going to leave a poll on my community board so you can vote. I will also leave it in my Instagram under Brown Girl Bella on my channel there. And yeah, vote for your favorite eyeshadow palette. Which one made your eyes pop when you saw it? Which one are you loving? And if there's not any in this category that you're loving, let me know in the comment section below which 
eyeshadows made you pop this year? What eyeshadows did you love to use in 2023? That's going to conclude our nominees for Bella's Best in Beauty Awards. This year, I did not do lips. So, what I'll do there is pick my own winners because I want to really bring this to you tomorrow during our um, Sunday sip. Oh, well, maybe what I'll do tomorrow is I will do Sunday sips in the morning, well, in the afternoon, and then in the evening, we'll do the Bella Awards and then we can award the other categories. Maybe I'll do that. In any case, let's get to these advent calendars. I'm dying to see what came out for 23. Okay, as always, we're going to start off with YSL. Day number 23. And it's right up here. And it is... YSL Libre. Love this fragrance. It's my one of my favorites from E Saint Laurent. So YSL, you did it again. Okay, next we have Cult Beauty. Let's see what we have today. Okay, 23 is right here at the very bottom. Here it is. And today, oh, another banger. This is by Sunday Riley. This is Good Jeans. I've used this before and I've loved it. So I'm so happy to have it again. It's fantastic. Finally, we have our friends at In Good Taste for the wine advent calendar. Day number 23. And we have, oh, another rose from Wild Child. This is their 2022 rose from Mendocino County, California. All right, we'll find out the tasting notes in this in our scratch and reveal. Okay, there's another fantastic unboxing of our advent calendars from YSL. We got Libre, which I discovered again when I went to my trip back in July and I used up all of my travel size. So this is perfect. Another little size for me to travel with. We have from our friends at Cult Beauty, the Good Jeans Glycolic Acid Treatment from Sunday Riley. This is great for giving your skin a little boost. And from our friends at In Good Taste Wines, we have the Wild Child 2022 Rosé Wine from Medicino County, California. Tasting notes in there are watermelon, kumquat, and guava. So that's going to be really, really great. So, babes, that is it for the Advent Calendar unboxings. Which product did you like the most? I don't know. Um, I think I liked all of them today. I have had such a good time opening up these Advent Calendars this year. I'm definitely going to keep an eye out on these Advent Calendars for next year to make sure that we get them again. But man, oh man, these were really, really fun to open. I think next year we might do four since it'll be my fourth year doing uh, Bellamis. If all works out and I still do Bellamis, that will be my fourth year of doing it. And I've been on the channel for about six years next year. So lots of time, lots of time to think because we have a whole year to figure out whether or not we're going to do Bella Miss or not. But I hope you enjoyed the unboxings. I hope you enjoyed the vlogs. Try to give you a little mix of everything. So I've got a lot of content that didn't make Bella Miss that I'm going to insert in. I do want to do more beauty reviews. So you're gonna see more of that, more beauty news. I'm gonna do more of that. And also take you with me on some excursions. We didn't get a chance to do too much this year, but Tune in next year because we're going to do even more next year. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed Bellamis. I'll see you back here tomorrow 
for our live Sunday sips, as well as the Bellamis Awards, which will begin tomorrow night. So until then, you have now been mellified.